millions to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if 
people are enjoying it. It's, you know, no harm, no foul type of thing. And, um, you know, let it, let it, you know, free, free flow or whatever. But, uh, you know, Tyler was trying to explain to me, and I guess I can't get it through my head, that you have the gates open, that the water, it's not going to run, you know, 100% of the time. And I just think um, you have a hard time trying to understand the gates open, but it's got to basically just pull behind it before it ever come to that point. So I mean, that's something that, you know, it's, as far as A and A or whatever, but my, my request for the, the, the lengthy dissertation here is just asking for an amendment to have the gates open a little bit longer, or maybe through the planting season, the harvest season. Um, you know, that would that would help uh, at least uh, talk to the farmer and, you know, how things are out there. And, um, just a request at that point of uh, the county uh, doing an alteration of permit, and I believe it's permit, what's called. starts to recede um, when it goes back down and gets to 6.57 we will close one of the tainer gates and then when it continues to recede and gets to 5.83 we will close the other one by the time we close that second gate there's very little and depending upon how fast we get there sometimes almost no water going over the crest of the dam mm -hmm. is all going through that chute or through the gate. <coughs> if you were more liberal or if you lowered the threshold or you closed that second gate, there would be a time there after you closed it where there would be no water going through the gate or over the dam because the pool above would have to fill back, back up, up to the crest of the dam before you would run over and flow downstream. Okay. I have some reservations about that. Um, I know the DNR would have some serious reservations about that. Because um, then, then you'd have pools created and fish kill and all kinds of things. There's potential there, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I, we can look at it. I'm not saying we can't, but I'm just saying I would have some reservations with uh, lowering that 5.83 number. Yeah. There's a lot of fishermen that are that a, go very, there all the time. Every day we go by it every day and there's always somebody fishing there. Yeah, very popular fishing spot. Yeah. So that's that's my two cents and, and yeah. balls in your court you guys can do what you want to do. But well, Mike, is that doable if Todd re looks at this and, and probably is going to have to have a little more schooling for us as far as um, I've been hitting the head a lot so I have to I have to learn a long time but I mean he's going to have to show us how this thing works because 
when he explained it, I'm not sure I completely understand. So I, I guess that way, if we visited about it, had maybe sometimes even I like to even go there and look at it. Yeah, I would love to show all of you if you were willing to take uh, a This is Rick Peterson. Um, has your tenant had trouble getting into the field this year? He said it was dry. He said it's the first time in. Probably three years because we've had excessive water for three years and all this river bottom. We and my parents own land along a, a creek and it's been a battle no matter where you are. It's not the dam that's causing the problem. I think it's just the excessive rain we've had for the last few years. Let's see how this summer goes and uh, see if it's just more of a problem with the weather cycle we had recently than changing our operations of the dam for, you know, because of the recent amount of rainfall we've had. Um, I, I do like your concerns and we do like to listen to people, uh, but I, I do believe the biggest Part of the problem is the amount of rain we've had these last few years. Uh, yeah. I, I farm, I got a spot I haven't had a crop out of for three years, and uh, there's tile in it. There's just not a big enough tile to get rid of the ex excessive rain. But now this year it's great, and I'll probably get a fabulous crop out of it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand your concerns, and, and uh, we'll take it under advisement, and Todd, he'll get us more informed on the operations of the dam. And uh, if we have problems in normal years, I think we should look at it harder. Mm -hmm. But I do believe the issue has been the excessive rain we've had. Um, I, know a farm, I know a friend of mine who's farmed a river bottom farm for 10 years. He says, I'm not farming it anymore. He says, let somebody else farm it. I'm not going to mess with it. I had three years of, you know, getting zero and putting the crop in. He gave it up, and now this year he kind of wishes he would have kept it. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this gentleman farmed up upstream from here. So...
funded for, if it, you know, cleaning it out with help, you know, if it's, you know, we can do this every five years or something, or, you know, you know, some way of consider a budget that way. I don't know if something would happen. Now you mean a bad way now. So you have to do some, I don't know what you're going to say, but you're saying, just think if you got some, you something in your house, you know, you got to ask. You know, money set aside for the furnace goes out or whatever, you know, so I'm just not coming up the right words. I'm trying to come up with the right idea of, right. you know, how we're funding or work. And if you had something that you're in control of, how you need to do repairs or replace or something. Because uh, that could really be in a, a worse off way if the games did not wait at all, I guess. Yeah. I was just going to say, Mike, you have my number, and you can call. We'll visit. Tom will do a little bit of educating for us um, so that we're more knowledgeable about it. Because, to be honest, I, I have to have him show, us, show me to see how it runs so I know. So I'll stay in touch with you. more moderate weather. She's on board as of, as of now, yeah. um, gung-ho. Um, 
uh, I'll play that by year, and if we have to make adjustments, we'll make those adjustments if it gets to be too much for her. Mm -hmm. um, How is the grass growing around them? We've seeded, let's see, two weeks ago we seeded in between like the poultry sites that yeah. we knew. We seeded the leach field area. Um, there was still so much traffic in and out that we couldn't see oh, okay. the area right around the cabins. So we did that. Oh, Rick. Tuesday of last okay. week. Okay. So I was out there yesterday. I saw all the sunshine, it's going to pop right over <laughs> <out> here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not growing like gangbusters around the cabins, I'll be honest with you. But the okay. leach field area and in between like those pull through sites, it's coming. We okay. can do some rain. Um, yeah. Honestly, yeah. it'd be nice to get some grass growing before people. It would track through there. So cross right. your fingers. But yeah. I mean, we talked about trying to water it, but it's just such a big area. It is. I don't. It, it's not really feasible no. to mm -hmm. to do that. So I'm just hoping we get a little nice one inch shot of rain here sometime this week, and it mm -hmm. would take off if we did. So okay. It's done, but it's in Mother Nature's hands, I guess, at this point. So Todd, when we rent that, I've had people ask. <clears throat> is it rented by the amount of people that are going to be around the cabin because they said well we have a huge family and we've got X amount of people um, and we have a camper that would be close so I mean I guess I was just curious you just did it a flat fee for for the cabin? Yep the cabin is going to be we're going to start at 75 a night we're going to see how that goes if there's a ton of interest and in you kind of get the feedback that, wow, this is cheap. Yeah. We'll probably adjust yeah. upward. Um, if there's not interest, which I hope isn't the case, I we may sure. have to adjust downward, but to me that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. As that's far as that's very super reasonable. Comparing yeah. other counties that have similar facilities, mm -hmm. we're right in, the, right in the ballpark there. 60 um, to 90, probably. Yep, judgeable. yep, um, yep, you're right. Um, there are two. Uh, camping hookups there located in between the cabins so it and like. we did that kind of as a buddy type site so mm -hmm. I want to rent the cabin but you want to come out and camp and hang out with me you can take that that site with your mm -hmm. camper mm -hmm. you camp there though you're going to pay the, pay the normal sure. uh, yeah. Yeah. building rate which is 17 a night that site is a full hookup so that's actually 25 a night it includes sewer sure. this is what full hookup oh, is yeah. so you can camp there and you can, well, not as long as you don't have more than 10 right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, in normal times, Bruce, I guess you could have 20 people there with your family if you right. choose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I was just curious because someone had mentioned, and I, said, I don't know how it's, don't know. I mean, you take 10 people to the hotel and stuff them into the two bedroom and. Yeah. <laughs> Those cabins are. They're big enough, but they're not overly. They're not overly no. spacious. Um, they're they're just adequate. Sleep six in there is going to be about the max. Yeah, you they're tight. Any more than that, you're going to be on top of each other. Well, I I guess if that becomes an issue of people stuffing twelve people in the cabin, maybe we'll have to put a little. Yeah, on the, a yeah. And if you have that space. issue coming up, you can adjust but your rules. Again, right. we're, it's going to be kind of a learn as you go type thing, and I. I would hope that most people are going to try to push the other. Well, I think we're hoping that we get to that point where yeah. we're starting to have it rented and we're having the other side yep. paying some of the. Yep. Yeah, a little money coming back bill, in. Definitely. Bills that we have. So. Yep. I'm hoping for that too. Awesome. For sure. So are we getting the campgrounds open? Campgrounds open Friday morning at 8 o'clock. Um, Governor did a, an updated proclamation, I believe it was. Wednesday at, mm -hmm. I don't know, I heard about it Wednesday like at 4 o'clock or something. So the house is going to be open or? For now they're closed. That's um, again. A lot of them are closed until? I haven't seen, seen any that are open, Dave, and you can correct me if you're. No, I haven't either. I've been looking at campsites all around. And I went know. again Saturday and looked at some and. The DNR. We're, is we're in the ballpark on everything. I think but we're so. close. I know Webster, they waited a week. They're not going to mm -hmm. open their campgrounds until the 15th, I believe, which would be this Friday. I guess I haven't talked to Matt Cosgrove. I'm not sure why he waited, but I think we have roughly, I was close to 20 campers between Gotch and Sheldon this weekend, so it was medium busy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, a crazy shoulder to shoulder type of a weekend, so it, it worked out well. I think Friday was a great day. Saturday was weather. 
Well, Probably a bigger part than with the weather than yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So super cooperative, which is okay. Yeah. So kind of ease our way into it. That's a good way to do it. Um, strictly enforcing the social distancing thing. Uh, no more than ten people in a group around a campfire. And I guess to me, as long as you follow those rules, it's not really probably more safe than going to the grocery store or yeah. there or everywhere, well, I guess. So <coughs> <coughs> with the bathrooms closed, we'll be okay as far as safety. Yeah. And yeah, they've closed for a while, let the camp, campers camp. Most of their self is contained anyway. Yep. yep, and that's one of our rules too. You have to have a self contained unit in order to camp in our campgrounds right now, yeah. at least yeah. until the back. So, so are the camp managers kind of, are they the ones that are overseeing all that? Yes. To make yep. sure that yeah. happens? Yep, camp posts are out there, and so they've kind of kept an eye on well, the number of people gathering, social distancing thing. Mm -hmm. kind of, Cracking the whip, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, and talking to them, people were pretty respectful. Everybody knows what's going on. And yeah. I think they just want to get back out into their element and sit mm -hmm. around. Honestly, I mean, even from a mental standpoint, I, I know I've talked to multiple people that were just glad to get out of the house and do mm -hmm. something different. And, and I get that. I understand that. Yeah. So, okay. um, I, at least as of today, things are going well there. Um, Good. The Memorial Day is coming. I know we'll be busy, so I hope there's no issues. I hope people continue to respect the social distancing thing with no more than 10, but we, I don't know. I anticipate maybe we'll have to remind people yeah. of that at that point, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I think it would be awesome. Yep. Well, we appreciate it very much for the update. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And sometime I would like to go over to Rutland yep. sometime. And I was going to say, whenever you guys have time whenever you guys want to. I think uh -huh. it would be really helpful if you actually could right. stay in there on that catwalk and I could see what you do go through it with you. Mm -hmm. I tried, you know, with my I, I do understand ideas. what you're saying about if you wait too long, then you drop the board in, and you got to wait for the pool to fill and the river will run dry. And, the, and I don't. I tried to explain it to Mike on the phone last week, and he didn't. It didn't quite register with him, which you know. Mm -hmm. Talking to him over the phone, I get yeah. you can't, you don't have that visual. It's hard. Right. I understand, yeah. um, but there is a concern there. With there's not going to be any water going right. downstream there, right. and it may be for a relatively short period of time. You know, it's not going to take long for that. But if it don't uh, rain, it's one of those dry years, right. and I all of a sudden, and it can just shut off and it don't we've rain. We've had that. I mean, I mean, we've gone from one extreme to the other yep. very quickly. So yep. I mean, and I know the the initial. Permit. I don't, do you guys want a copy of any of this stuff? The permits or the operating plan it was done in '66. There was a revision done in 2009, and I came across some correspondence from the DNR that expressed reservations about that no flow downstream mm -hmm. even before they did the, the revision. Um, so that's that's where I'm coming from mm -hmm. with that. I, the DNR would look at it, but I, I don't know that they would approve right. liberalizing, closing right. the second yeah. wave. But well, we have to understand, too, I mean, we're all sharing this. Yes. You know, it isn't just one entity that's taking care of, you know, that, that's responsible or using that, everybody is. Yes. Yep. So you got to look at the whole thing well, picture. Yeah. You well, can't just... Groups. And I totally understand where Mike's coming yeah. from. Yeah. I know he's in kind of a tough situation. Yeah. He wants income for his parents. And right. I understand that, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, you did a, I thought a really good job of kind of reminding him you're trying to farm river on the bottom river. ground, and there's mm -hmm. in farming there's no guarantee with no. the best ground, let alone right. river bottom ground. So well, that picture I showed on the if it's in section 29, which that's where most of it's at, is on the south side of the gravel road there. The majority of his the majority area. of his yes below the dam yes yeah. So what little is backed up on the Upper side. Top side that affects the water coming into his is got to be cool. Yep. This just it's the sandy area. I'm not a hydrologist, but Chris from like the naked eye, even if you did wait to close that second gate, I just don't see that it would have a very big, big impact bearing. on the majority of his acres. That, yeah. but again, that's my it's, opinion. It's mainly it's just due to excessive rainfall we've had these last few years. Yeah. Yeah. So. And yeah, I think you nailed it, Rick, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Well, my son's lived in the Kansas City area for, what, eight, nine years now? And there was that one section there by that river where that great big bridge is. 
it has never had a crop here. And that's been, like I said here, like I have, we of course haven't been down there this year. I'm sure there probably is this year. So you know it. It's just, yeah. you never, it's volatile yeah. by a river. Yep. You don't know which way it's going to go. Different factors. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. The pattern tiling too. I'm sorry, it's good for farming. But yeah. when it does rain, all that water comes yeah. faster and there's more fluctuations mm -hmm. with the river levels. And mm -hmm. that has a negative effect again on those mm -hmm. that are trying to farm right next to the river. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's the way it is. Yeah, it's back to life right so, here. Well, we appreciate all the. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, happy to come. And like I said, let me know if you ever want to go to the. All right. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I'll bring my pool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I gotta get a license. I used to fish there years ago. Yeah. I haven't done it for years. Okay. Moving along. Um, here we got Matt on Zoom. We are right on the schedule. <laughs> him on the phone and, and you could hear that hammer just pounding them suckers in. And he says his cattle were just at the far end of the pen wondering what the heck's going on. But uh, Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
A couple motor patrol heading out this morning, so I'm assuming they're still blading and getting ready for spraying, right? I noticed they, they're starting to do some dust control out there already. Pretty much been over the roads once for sure, and they're ready for them then. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I read through the claims. Uh, we have general claims of $342,313.78. The large majority of that was rocks and, and bridge, bridge work. Uh, the drainage claims were $7,334 even.
that quietly? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be around. Okay. Just the uh, light involved secondary role, so that's why I asked. Yeah, I'm just going to go to the restroom, I think, right now. Well, I think you, you got it. <laughs> The claims week, Peggy. I'll make a motion to go in a drainage. By the time we get set up, it'll be time. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Clients are showing up. 
I guess. So we're not able to call your attorney, but right. you know, they're not going to go to Jewel right now. They're going to meet with their lawyer. So it's, been, it's just been weird. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure people aren't sitting in jail for months and months and months and months. When and that could be happening. It's definitely happening. We have two here who are in our jail. That they, one will get out. One should be. They both should be in jail. But one, I had any reason to keep on full trial on this week, and then the other one will violate his pretrial release. Mm. But even probation people, when they don't want to go to prison, we can't hold them in jail from March till August. Yeah. Right. They'll, yeah. They'll discharge their sentence. Mm -hmm. Trish is here, Eric. Okay, I can see you here, Dave. Oh, yeah. We can go ahead and start. Looks um, like we just have a possible action on the billing policy for workers. I do have the information that Trish sent to us, so I'll let uh, let her go ahead and uh, talk through that. Okay. Um, we've had some issues with people submitting billing that doesn't have the correct information or any information where to bill it or anything. Um, so I think we need to just establish exactly what they need to provide for the billing and I don't know if we eventually make that a solution or something or adjust it our policy. You make that your prep protocol. Protocol, yeah. yeah, it's your protocol. Uh -huh. and, make, and then that's the requirement. Because, you know, most of them know what to do and it's just some of them don't. So you guys send this to all of the, the vendors that you use? Yeah. Okay. Our contractors and your staff members. So if, if this is the things that you're going to require in order to make that, then this thing will be, say, Bill Smith <coughs> comes from Clarion, first time he's working, he's going to get a copy of this. When you submit a bill, all this stuff has to be on there, or it's going to get sent back to you. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way. Well, if he does it. not have a work permit first, he will not get paid. No. For, yeah, even yeah. if he does the work, if he does not get a work permit first, they do not get paid. Looks like what proof of insurance too? Yeah, they should be providing that, and most of them don't. Do we know that all of them that their insurance is up to date because? For me, when new co-ops, they have an anniversary, mm -hmm. and when my insurance, they, it comes due on once a year, she calls and says, have your insurance agent send me your proof that you are still insured, so that, do we do that? We may, may need to do that yeah. just for the simple That's fact so. that we are uh, on the hook if yeah. They tear through a fiber optic line and we don't list. have any proof that they, well, they thought they were insured. Yeah. So I just would put that, that on their name and I'm going to use one of our contractors, Doug Marcel. His anniversary date would be, say, June 1st. Next June or before the June 1st deadline, we send him an email or a message and say, Doug, can you make sure whoever your insurance agent sends me your proof? Most of them will just fax it or email it to you, and it's right. easily done. That's your accord? Hmm? The accord or whatever it is? Yeah. Proof of insurance. Proof of insurance. Yeah. yeah. And I guess as long as all of those numbers or all of those, the work order, the township, the section, the drainage district, the landowner, the tenant, the pictures, I think the pictures are huge, especially when we aren't able to go stand over the top of a hole and look oh. down in there. Before they cover it up. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you don't know what was done. I like to see the proof of the thing that when they open it up and you can see that there's a broken pipe, they take pictures. I, 
This is how we repaired it. This is what it looked like when they pulled the broken stuff out. This is what it looked like before we buried it. Yeah, that's a good. I mean, just a handful of pictures. The more for you, the mm -hmm. more you get to put into your file that proved that it was properly taken care of. And if all those things are on there, that and that's going to make your billing easier, streamline it. I'm good. Yeah, cause, and a good description of what was done is always kind of handy on the billing. And I did examples of different ones that we currently use yeah. for you to see what we have going on. And I think they're pretty decent. I mean, you just need to make sure everybody does it that comes in and that. Yeah. Well, if you send this out and you're to all of your contractors and they would have a, you can do that right away. And then they'll have the example. They'll know what the requirements are. Mm -hmm. And the proof of the certificate of insurance, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta, gotta have that. And I have never seen anything. I mean, I get it occasionally on different ones. but We get it on the big projects. Right. We never have had. I think you need to do it on all of them. Like you said, if you go through fiber optics, then we're. Yeah, and all of a sudden there's a. The guy cuts, so he's out there digging. Whoops, cut the line. Load up, let's get out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's why they have to have that work order in their hand yeah. before they start digging. And I, I'm just looking at the back page. This is example three. I see rock 14 ton leaf. I mean, do they submit bills, receipts, that when they do that, or how do they just put on their all 14 tons? Generally, they just put the, it's a synopsis of everything they've okay. had billing. I just didn't know how that worked.
is followed in order to be paid. I'll second. If it is not followed, they don't get paid. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then next time they will follow. Yeah. Right. That's right. Just so you know, you bring up some pretty good points. First of all, the work order, if you don't have one and you send it to you don't get paid. So it kind of goes along with the policy. Right. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now you can bang your fist when they yeah. come in and say, why haven't I? Because you didn't do it. Well, yeah, exactly. And if you, you send this letter out to them and you put that in there, that'd be, that would be one key note for whatever your letter is going to say is that if you do not have a work order, you will not be paid. Mm -hmm. Right. Perfect. I did send a um, work order list to you, email, and everybody here has a copy of the ones outstanding by um, contractor. How many of these contractors go out and look at jobs and charges for looking at them? One. Why? Yeah. I don't think he will be in the future. Did you uh, address that? Mm -hmm. okay. Eric has spoke to him too, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, that's not acceptable. When you get up in the morning and you drive out and look at a project and you charge the house for the project, that's just not, that's not a protocol. We have no other contractors to do that. Mm -hmm. so, Well, I guess uh, I like the idea is that we have the work orders in front of us, and I guess I still believe that we should get a, especially through the work season, winter we don't get a whole lot done, but um, if nothing else, as you check them off, just send us a, either an email or a list as to X amount have been completed, so we can kind of... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like this. Just give us an update mm -hmm. later on this summer. Yeah. If we need to rattle somebody's cage and say, hey, are you going to get this looked at? Because if not, we need to move it to someone that's going to be more active with it. That's the way I look at it. And I know Doug said he has quite a few of his done. So. He hasn't gotten the billing on him yet, so mm -hmm. that's pretty normal. Well, they wait for rainy days. They yeah, like the sunshine. And more often than he probably knows, but yeah, uh, you mentioned a couple of good things. Going out and looking at things in person is good, and uh, keeping track of you know, the progress of the work order list. So I think we're on the right track with both of those things. Perfect. Good. Anything else? Drainage related? Nope. Did anybody come in to attack you that I need to be here? <laughs> oh, glad to know you're outside there. Yeah. How did you guys get in? <laughs> I kicked the door. I'm <laughs> way in. I'm surprised you didn't hear the bangs. We're being harassed by the sheriff's department, Eric. Well, we should all be used to that by now. <laughs> I don't know if we can charge him for harassment or not, Bruce. Well, we got it on video. So Thank you. 
put the concrete in? Radio towers, 
deal with it with the height of the tower as if it were to uh, fall over. So if you took your pen and you, you stand it on end, and uh, if that pen is 200 feet and it falls over, you're looking at a 200 foot uh, distance of fall over, and many of them indicated a uh, indicated a, a distance to the property line equal to the height of the tower. So in other words, if you have a 200 foot tower and it fell over, um, basically it, would, it could only go as far as the property line. There are some variations in some of those, but being ours is not real specific. Uh, I, I told the gentleman from the company that I would, I would make a recommendation or at least talk to you about the fact I would like to see it as the height of the tower going to a setback of 25 feet in any direction. And the reason for that is um, I felt that if, if we don't know in some cases, some properties or acreages may have buildings, uh, you know, from built a long time ago before the ordinance, they might be right on a property line. And so I felt that the, a 25 foot setback plus the height of the tower would be better, but also I would add to it the actual language in our ordinance and simply say whichever is greater. I, I looked up for on the FCC and uh, that was quite a quite a lengthy uh, uh, research on that, and most of the most of that was again dealing saying. Well, local or state regulations would apply. Of course, the FAA has regulations on height, uh, especially uh, you know around airports and that kind of thing. So I felt like any of the federal or state regulations would fall under the language that we currently have. But it, what I would add to it would also provide a little more uh, specific information on, on what we would recommend for this particular uh, company. Uh, in the long run, I think that we probably it would be a good idea for us to look at having some sort of uh, maybe specific information on this to make it less vague uh, down the road, maybe looking at uh, some of the other things as well in the ordinance that I have found that are really not uh, specific enough for people to answer. And so I guess my comment here is, uh, or request is to say if I could go ahead and contact this uh, company back and just simply say we would uh, make the addition, I've already talked to the guy about this, of having the tower height plus 25 foot setback in all directions. It doesn't actually say that, but I would like to, to inform the, the gentleman of that and he said that that would, that would be fine with them in this case. So hopefully I zoomed through that quickly enough, uh, but I guess I just entertain any questions or comments you might have. I think that's a good idea, Randy. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that extra 25 feet on top of the height for the setbacks. What did you guys do for wind turbines? Wasn't it one and a half times the height? I think it was. Yes, and that, but that would be that would also fall under the categories of whether you're talking about the setback or you're talking about the property lines. And a lot of that has to deal with what is the lay of the land and how closely are property lines in different directions and that kind of thing. So it varies so much depending upon where they want to locate that tower or wind generator or whatever. And so, again, I think that's maybe something down the road that uh, you know, maybe looked at as far as either amending or whatever we would do was on the uh, on the ordinance that is there now. So uh, again, I apologize for the late on this, but he wanted something back as soon as possible, like everybody they wanted yesterday. So, uh, but I just thought I'd, I'd throw that out and uh, see what you thought. Do and we need to change how I should this an ordinance? Do we need to? How do we I, think have to the future, I think in the future we do, but. That's what I'm asking. Well, Randy, uh, 
the height, 25 plus of 25 foot. You right. mentioned that to the company or the gentleman inquiring. Right. We're fine, fine with that. Right. And that is the potential change you would make. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, at this point, would it be fair that they need, like I said, they're wanting the, the clarification sooner than later. And right. that is what you're going to ask for the agreeable. Go ahead and just make sure that is what they do for this uh, purpose that we're working on right now. Right, and, and remembering that this will have to go through the uh, special exception use process in front of the uh, Board of Adjustments. So all of that will be included in that. And so uh, they, they would have to agree with that through the uh, special exception use uh, hearing and that kind of thing. So, and that would also, I want to make sure that uh, that would also include any uh, any other parts of the tower. I don't know if it was a guide tower or if it's a monofold tower. He didn't mention that, but I would, I would say the tower and any other supporting or any other parts of the tower would be included in that in that requirement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, sir. We got John here. Hi, uh, I don't. I don't think you need to amend the ordinance if you want to set conditions on granting a special use exception permit. I think you can set the conditions you talk about or recommend it under those conditions. Tell the company that, and then have the board of adjustment vote on whether to approve it that way. If you want to have something more specific in the zoning ordinance, we would have to amend it. But as far as granting a special use permit or a variance, I think. One of the good roles of the zoning administrator is you can make your recommendation saying, in this case, if it's going to be 300 feet tall, I want 325 as a setback. Um, and I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable to tell tell the company that, and that's reasonable to recommend. I wouldn't require any changes. If you're unhappy with the specificity in the zoning ordinance, then you know, it sounds like you looked at other counties. By all means, if you have changes you want to suggest, my my advice would be to make all the changes you want, submit those to the board, and they can look at amending the zoning ordinance or adding things to the zoning ordinance. Uh, but as far as, I'm going to repeat myself. So I, I think the way that you presented it is a good way to do it. And it would not require any amendment.
since uh, all employees are back to work in the courthouse this week, um, I think we're of the opinion that we would put this on hold or on the back burner for now. I don't see a reason to continue it at this point. Uh, just your thoughts. I would agree with that. They're all back to work. Yeah. We would need to do the every, every other week thing. If it comes to the point where we need to do this again, I would come to you, ask you to reinstate it. Yeah, if our numbers start to spike in the county, yes. we can surely go back to doing it. Okay. We'll leave that to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. specifically just about the uh, full staff at the courthouse, just that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything more, more or less than that, just the fact that it's fully staffed now forward. That's correct. So it doesn't really need any action then if we're not going to continue it. I just thought I'd better put action on there in case you didn't agree with me and we wanted to keep doing yeah. that. So. Okay. We are at seven now in the county. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And I think that still part of the reason that the numbers continue to climb is they're testing more people than yeah. the ability to have more tests. So we're probably going to find more people that would test positive, unfortunately. But knock on wood, we're still low compared right. to some of the times. Well, hopefully they'll have that antigen test that'll be more uh, prevalent when we eliminate that and get more people Janice, uh, excuse me, uh, Eric, uh, Janice, she dropped off her report for us this week too, so everything seems to be fine in her office also.
Say, hey Ben, you were you were fine with the language? Yeah, the language looks fine to me. Okay. And Peggy, the outlying cities have seen all that. They all have copies of what their language okay. was, and they're going through the same process you are. Okay. Um, if this language is okay and you don't want to change it, then I would have it on next week's agenda with a resolution. <coughs> to approve the language and officially file it for requesting an election. Okay. So, so we, we make the recommendation, we're good with the language, then they are notified that the board is okay with the way it's written. At the state. And the no. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have at least 50% approval by resolution by at least 50% of the governing bodies or making up 50% of the population. So, so far I have the city of Humboldt, I have Dakota City, I have Livermore. It doesn't hit that population thing until the county does. Okay. Hits. Once the county hits, we'll hit that threshold and then all the rest of them need to get their language to me. All right, well, I'll request you put that on the agenda for next week. Okay. Okay. Approval. Okay. Uh, the, only, the only meeting I had was the LEC meeting last week, which was Zoom. I didn't have any meetings other than several phone calls, I guess, that I, one was on phone today with us, so. I was not able to attend any of the national meetings this last week. Uh, Wednesday the 6th, I had a VA conference call, and the VA hospitals are going to open back up. Uh, they will start seeing patients again. Suggest you call in, get your appointments and stuff uh, at all the clinics. They'll be opening back up a little bit at a time, but they still want you to call. Then after I got done with that one, I got a call from Steve King, and he had a town hall meeting, and uh, he's working on getting things uh, open back up again and. He said he is running for election, but that's in the back burner because right now he's got a pandemic to deal with, and that's what he's dealing with. But he is running for election. That's all I had. Uh, food pantry this week. Yes, I was. Exactly. Wednesday night, I'm not sure. How, Wednesday afternoon, I'm not sure what the particulars on it. We're having a ministerial meeting today at noon, so I'm going to ask if they're going to do it the way they're doing the food pantry here, where people pull in, stay in their vehicle, they just give them a pre-bagged bag. Oh, well, this the one down at the fairgrounds? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, so I will, I guess I'll hopefully get some information on that at lunch. Uh, the other thing I would say is um, I've had a couple of people upset about the food pantry um, because they think that there isn't enough stuff being given out. Or I'm always running the food pantry, and I'm not trying to pawn this off on Call Edmo. I'm just saying that the ministerial board isn't, they've turned it over to Edmo, and those are, they have the guidelines, and they don't want people in the food pantry, so that's why they're doing the drive up, bring the bag out, hand it to you, you get what you get, and I think that'll probably be, if I was to guess, I would say that would be what the mobile will be. We would be inside, put the bag together, bring it out, hand it to them, and that's what you get. So, the other thing I'd say, Peggy, is Friday all of us were involved in the distribution at uh, 
secondary roads and our uh, <laughs> sheriff's deputies. So uh, all of us kind of scattered, went yeah. different directions, got that all taken care of. So. Looks like we're good on this end. Do you want to wait till two minutes and then we'll be at 10 o'clock or you want to go early? I'd like to be prior to 10 so it just feels <laughs> like we accomplished something prior to us being on the hour. I will make a motion then at 9.58 to adjourn. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.